I'm Scott from Aristocob.com. And I'm Seth from MarkwoodAdventures.com. Together we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club, and uh, welcome to Tobacco Advent Day 11. Woohoo! It's a Wednesday. You know what? This is exciting because we're actually recording this in real time. This was recorded today. Right? Yes, ab absolutely, yeah. Uh, we did not record this yesterday or tomorrow, um, but today, today right now. Right now. Yeah. So you are watching this today. Now. So, um, how's it going? It's going really well. Uh, had something exciting happen yesterday. What's that? Went on a field trip. So I work at a high school with a student, and where he goes, I go. And um, he is in a game, art, and design class. And we got to go to a field trip Hold on. to, yes. He does artwork of, like, wildlife? Game? Yes. Yes. No. Um... Computer games, card games, board games. Okay. Like yes, Minecraft. like Minecraft. Like you're putting in a dog tag. No. And uh, and so f the teacher for this class decided that the kids should get a chance to go to an actual video game design studio. And we live about an hour away from one in Cary, North Carolina, is Epic Games, most known for creating Gears of War, the Gears of War series, huge um, Xbox hit. Hmm. So we got to go out and check them out. They gave us a tour, about two hours, saw all their facilities. I, the nerd in me was just drooling over all their computers and everything. It was cool. That's a problem. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wiped it off with my shirt. It's fine. Um, but one of the coolest things is they have a motion capture room. And you walk in and it's, it's like, have you ever seen the behind the scenes of how they did the Matrix? Kind of like that. Oh, where it's a Neo's an falling right. It's, okay. it's an arena looking room with cameras all around the top and they didn't have a motion capture suit there but they did have some of the guns that the actors use so when they're recording motion capture for the video games they put on a suit and it has these little balls all over it right. and then they have these replica guns with balls on those and the computer captures the image and uh of where those balls are pinpointed, lays it over the framework of the character, and it uses that motion to create the characters in the game. So it's kind of like how, um, if you've ever seen the Polar Express or any of the motion capture movies, how you can tell it's Tom Hanks. It's the same technology. It was cool. And one of the neatest things about it, they let us play with the, the guns that had the motion capture balls on them. If you took a picture of it, it was normal. It looked like a gun with balls on it. Um, but if you use the flash, those balls lit up bright blue, just <laughs> like if you were using the camera um, to, to actually capture. It is wild. I'm going to put some pictures in. It, it's amazing. And it just happened by accident. Yeah, somebody, that that somebody, used, it's, well, that somebody used a flash. Okay. They used a flash on their camera, and it just lit up. And so you, you don't see it in real life. You see it on the film. And you wouldn't expect it to do that because the balls, they look like they painted with a gray okay. material. So you wouldn't expect them to give off a bright light. It is cool. I'm going to include that here. Okay. That's what I've been up to. We should do some motion capture for these. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do that coming up. Hey, maybe we ought to explain our microphone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Well, you know, the microphone wasn't working anyway, but it was a nice prop. And um, when we arrived this morning, we realized that we didn't have that nice prop, and it just felt naked here. So um, we're in a wood shop, so we have some tight bond wood glue to uh, to fill in for our our microphone. Okay. I don't know why. There's something about that space that yeah. needs to be filled. It just didn't feel right. Yeah. We we thought about what we could use. It was my fault. I dropped the ball. I'd I wasn't okay. thinking, it's thinking, right. ah, we're not using the microphone right. anyway. Tobacco Admit, day yes. 11. So I'm yes. going to turn we're around, ahead. we're going to get some tobacco, <coughs> and we have a cornament up here as well for whomever provided us with this tobacco. Why do I say tobacco? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Simpsons, there's an episode where the uh, people, somebody in the town... I think it's Homer, maybe, invents um, a hybrid a hybrid of tomatoes and tobacco there. They taste like garbage, but they're incredibly addicting. 
Um, they call them Tamaco. Wait, it, you can't see the number. Yeah. This this is wait wait what is what is is it Ralphie? What does Ralphie Wiggins say? Wiggum say about it? I don't remember. Something about <laughs> with all the stuff all over his face. It tastes like grandma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from Eric McClary, YouTube name Terran seventy four. He sent us some Sutliff Tobaccos Molto Dolce. We have had this. In fact, we might. Or Molto Dolk. <laughs> we might have some of that here, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> All right, so tin description, um, rich and creamy texture mm. of vanilla, caramel. You can smell the vanilla. And honey. Or is that caramel? What do you say? Uh, caramel. What do you say? Is there a difference between caramel and caramel besides the pronunciation? Um, caramel is more smooth. I think you, you made that up. Hey, and, and, and now that we're in real time, thank you for the suggestion of using um, a bowl. I happen to have another one of these little uh, parts dishes. Maybe, I didn't use maybe the bowl. you haven't heard me you talking noticed? about this part dish yet. I forget whether that's been posted. But um, I use these in my shop. I like them a lot. I got some big ones like this one that I'm using to hold some pipes and some, uh, some dottle. And uh, so I'm going to pour some of this tobacco into this bowl and use that to fill, because this is silly. Yeah, that would have been really smart to do a second ago. Uh, we also have some more lighters this time, so <laughs> also we're not idea. sharing and praying that the one lighter we have doesn't run out. All right, go ahead and get, get going. I was going to say, I don't have to wait for your lighter. That's awesome. <coughs> <coughs> What are you smoking in today? Uh, nose warmer. Morgan nose warmer, and I am also smoking. Mine is finished. In a naked Morgan nose warmer, the official cornament. Still have a little bit of a cold. I cannot believe what's been going on with me since spring. I've never had any allergies, but this year I've been just overwhelmed by pollen and I've traveled so much this year. It seems like everywhere I traveled it was spring. And maybe it's pollen, maybe it's hotel rooms or hotel conference rooms. Maybe I have a sinus infection I'm not aware of. I don't know, but I'm really tired of this and probably need to go see somebody about it. But today I'm I'm picking up a little bit of this, finally. Alright, so, what are you tasting? I'm just going to say, it says it tastes like vanilla, caramel, and honey. When they use these descriptions and the flavors, are they just 100% BSing? Or just 50% BSing? Well, well, I think the only time I've ever tasted a flavor that fit the description, there have been a couple that have had very minor hints of vanilla. Hold on. I'm sorry. You are so off base on this one. And you know why? Because you totally taste vanilla caramel. I want you, no. <laughs> Let me review what the tin says again. Listen carefully. Rich and creamy texture of vanilla caramel and honey. Oh, so it's kind of so thick in the mouth. So the flavor <laughs> could be anything. It's just kind of thick. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of that. Words mean things. I, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, and it, it doesn't matter if it's if it's uh, tobacco, alcohol, a lot of foods, sausage. But, yeah, I don't know where you're going with this, but I, I like the sound. There good. are cheese, cheese. <laughs> there, there are times where descriptions like this come about. I, it it tastes like tobacco. Maybe maybe I don't have a sophisticated enough palate, but yeah. If somebody were to hand this to me with no description, tell me to try it and to give a you know what what words come to mind. I 
I clearly would molto dolce would be one of them. <laughs> yeah. The the word caramel would not come up. Even the word vanilla mm -hmm. wouldn't even come in, come to it's mind. It's not as vanilla y as, as some that we've had. No, it's give that a whiff. It, in the raw form, mm -hmm. it actually has quite a bit more um, bouquet. It's just I don't I don't know. I I Yeah, it does. <clears throat> I don't. Do you remember where we had this first time? Mm -mm. At the TAPS meeting. That is the Triangle Area huh. Pipe Smokers uh, to show. Well, actually, the TAPS group is a, a pretty big group of pipe smokers and pipe collectors um, over in the Raleigh Durham uh, mm -hmm. area of North Carolina. And then they do a show every spring that we attended this year. and. Also, many years ago, we went one time. I think we're going to try to make that a regular part of our yeah. routine if we can fit it in. But we were given a tin of this that we tried there as we sat around outside. Mm -hmm. And I remember being, I don't know, it was, just, it was one of those things like, yep, that's pipe tobacco. Yeah. You're beeping. Yeah. It's not that it's bad or anything. No, it's, it's not. It's just not, uh, it's not delivering on the promise. Overheat it a little bit there, see if that does anything to it. Not really. I think this would fall into the category uh, of some that we've talked about that is a, a, a good, um, a good blend for, you just, I don't know normal smoking times, right? You know that that it's not going to be the the treat tobacco mm -hmm. like the special occasion, um, and and it, I don't I, it's not it's not as light as some that we've talked about that would be good for just mowing the lawn and and you know running around doing yard work sort of smoke. Um, it's kind of in between, just sitting on the porch. You know the way yelling at the young the way the way some people will rate cigars. They also, with some pipe tobaccos, will talk about an early morning smoke or a late night smoke. And the idea behind that is, if you wake up in the morning and you light your pipe and you're smoking your pipe or smoking cigars all day long, your late night tobacco <clears throat> is going to be stronger. a bit stronger yeah. than your first tobacco of the day because it, it'll have to be to to work its right. way through. Your taste buds. This to me would be 11 a.m. <laughs> if, if by, by that by that rating. Yeah. This is not so light that it's a that yeah. that first cup of coffee kind of a smoke. It's not strong by any means. Not bad. You know what I'm getting? This this is going to sound weird. I'm getting a hint of Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the biscuit you just finished. Mm -mm. <laughs> not the vanilla. Maybe it's a combination of the vanilla, the caramel, and the, uh, the honey. Maybe uh, when you combine those three, with a they have a they have a with a biscuit. Uh, the end result is a Play-Doh texture. <laughs> That's what you're getting. <laughs> Could be. Guys, thank you for watching Tobacco Advent Day 11. Uh, we will see you tomorrow morning. Uh, make it a great day. What he said.